Welcome to a, another episode of Nude Clan. Uh, I don't have the theme song on my soundboard, so this is the point where either Schweiss or Joe is going to put it in. And if you hear silence and no theme song, that's why. Uh, <laughs> I am your host, A4 Extreme, for this week. I'm joined by Zach. Hey. And uh, we have a special guest with us, the game dev behind the uh, company Kinky Fridays. Uh, do I do I call you Henley or? You can just call me Dave, whatever it is. All right, cool. So this is Dave from Kinky Fridays. Um, Zach and I have already played through a game by Kinky Fridays, namely uh, Pieces of My Heart, which is a literal hentai puzzle game where you put together jigsaw puzzles in order to go on dates with voluptuous, sexy women. And I enjoyed it quite a lot. Zach did as well. Um, yeah, I had fun. I'm sure, I'm sure a review episode of the game is, is forthcoming at some point. <laughs> we uh, should. We should definitely review. We should force Joe to play it. He won't play it. Yeah. But um, we just wanted to have you on. And by the way, thank you so graciously for staying ah. up so late where you are to uh, do this interview episode with us. And... Uh, you know, sort of help us get an episode out this week. But uh, we wanted to ask you some questions about game dev and sort of what it's what it's like to to be making adult oriented games in today's uh, in today's market, because it's a lot more commonplace now. Um, I guess my first major question is since uh, since Steam has sort of loosened their grip on allowing adult oriented content to be on their platform. Uh, do you find that it's uh, a little bit easier to make and sell lewd games? Uh, that's, that's kind of like a a strange question to answer because it's not so much that it's loosened the grip, more that uh, the audience is more forthcoming with purchasing. I would say. Okay. Uh, I so I've um I've been making games since two thousand and eight. Um, wow! And I've I've only started. Uh, well, I mean, originally I started um, doing uh, marketing. Uh, like, because I used to uh, run a website called uh, IndieDB, and then uh, after that, I made a sales platform uh, called Desura, which was basically a uh, before Steam started doing uh, indie sales, uh, there was a huge hole in the market where you know no one was selling indie games, so we're just like, okay, fuck it, we'll sell indie games. Who cares? Yeah. And, um, it was a <laughs> It was a very uh, difficult thing to do. Uh, we we were definitely way too ambitious with our store, and we should have made it a lot more simpler. But uh, so I have experience both uh, with the organic marketing side of things as well as the um, uh, sales platform, like creating a sales platform and uh, selling just thousands of video games every day. Um, I think I think the Zero ended up with like. 8,000 indie games before Steam was like, let's roll into green, green light, right? That, that's when, that's when our business like kind of. Whew, yeah. Cause before, yeah, because... before Steam green light, I want to say the only time you really got, um, uh, like, like major coverage of indie games being sold anywhere was like the very first few humble bundles. Yep. Uh, yep. Way, way back in like 2009, 10, I want to say it was, it was, it was a long time ago. Very different from what Humble Bundle is today. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it's funny you mention that because I also, um, uh, John and Jeff are the dudes that, uh, make it. And, um, we first met each other when they were making a game called Lugaroo, which is a, oh, um, which is like a ninja fighting rabbit procedurally generated. Yeah. I have that. Because I think it was in like the first humble indie bundle when that first came out. Yeah. So they, um, so <laughs> Jeff Rosen's brother, David Rosen, is the guy who's making it. And originally those guys were like, oh, let's, uh, let's make a game together. And like, oh, sweet, cool, let's do that. And um, they didn't have a platform to sell these things on. So we started selling Lugaroo for them. Um, and then they had this like big brain idea. They're like, oh, man, let's. What if we just like wanted to help out charity and just got a bunch of really silly indie guys together and like fuck it, man, let's sell the game and that that's how Humble was born. Um, 
And we we started a competing website with them called Indie Royale as well, which was a sort of like a um, a bundle website for uh, it's it's basically the same thing. And um, then um, in two thousand and I want to say fourteen, no thirteen, I started working uh, with John and Jeff at Humble Bundle as well. So we had a lot of. Um, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of history there, basically. Okay, uh, kind of history. So, um, but to answer your question, uh, it's not that there is a. Um, it's easier. It's not like it's. It's not like there's a like a Steam just released the stranglehold on. It's like no. It's imagine imagine five percent of the total Steam user base, right? And imagine that ninety percent of that five percent like purchase games. Okay, so. Now imagine the the ninety five percent of the regular Steam base, and imagine like you know maybe I don't know like eighty percent of them purchase games, but you have a much higher pool of video games that you're competing against in order to get their attention. So yeah, every single day there's like thirty new games added to Steam. So right. like, especially during things like the Halloween events or anything like that, like you just go to any new game. Like right now, you go to Steam. Look at the upcoming releases, and I can guarantee you've never heard of any of them before. Yeah, um, yeah. And it it's definitely gotten <clears throat> making video games has gotten easier because back before the you know 2011, uh, it was literally like you had to be the smartest person on the face of the planet to make a video game, and then Unity rolled around, and Unreal became more than just modding tools, and all of a sudden, it just sort of streamlined like, everything. Yeah, I mean, that's where, like, games like Insurgency and all that came from and Chivalry and stuff like that because they used to be Half-Life mods, you know? Like, they used to be, like, a bunch of dudes in their basement being like, yeah, nah, we can <laughs> we can use uh, Gold Source. Yeah, let's tr- let's make a game on Gold Source. And, yeah. So, uh, going talking about that, actually, like, leads us into the next question we had. Um, with the influx of, like, adult-oriented video games and, like, the hentai puzzle games, do you think... Like, does it make it harder to stand out when you make a game like this? Or did you have a pretty good player base? Knowing kinky games, did it help? What was your, uh, like, experience I get, with it? That was, that was kind of, like, that was kind of what I meant, too, by is it easier to sell? Because just what you said, like, no offense to anybody, but, like, I think it wouldn't be uncouth to say that Steam these days is more or less just, like, a giant trash pile where all these games just constantly flood the, uh the the uh the upcoming releases like i can't tell you how many times i go through my we- my recommended list on steam and it's just like all these hentai puzzle games that are all the exact same like mosaic sliding thing so because yeah because they're fucking easy to make man. yeah i mean no, pieces was not easy to make like only because we were like okay we see like basically i i remember the conversation i had i i was sitting there because okay so kinky fridays is a professional company we're not like you know, a couple of dudes making video games. Like, you no, know, we have investors. We have all of that stuff. Like we're a proper mm-hmm. business. Like we do, you know, financial reports. We do all that stuff. So we have investors. And I remember sitting down because uh, I'm I'm Australian. I live in Poland, and um, I've only recently started getting into the uh, investor uh, base here in Poland. And the way that like basically, I got, one of the investors sat down with me, and he's like, okay. Uh, you've done some good work at all these other companies. I want to, you know, see what you can do with a tiny little bit amount of money. And when I say tiny little bit of money, a bit of money, I mean like, um, you know, like I, like maybe like a sixteenth of what most game companies get. So I looked at all of the current market that was going on, and a lot of the products uh, on Steam. This was like early two thousand eighteen, um, and a lot of the products on Steam were like these stupid puzzle games right like these these things that were like oh we sell it like the main goal of these puzzle games i shit you not is sell it for like five dollars but mostly focus on the chinese community because of the fact that there is so many of them and 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 the thing with the chinese uh when you sell on steam to like you know asia's pacific countries or whatever minus australia obviously um you get like maybe the fo- it's like 40% of the cost of what it normally is. So if you sell a game for like $5, you're, you're actually selling a game for like 
two dollars, right? Okay. Um, so that's why you see so many of these puzzle games have astronomically high reviews, right? And they seem like the simplest things on the face of the planet. That's because they are. Yeah. And it doesn't take much to build them. So these people, uh, these developers make these games, they churn them out, and they cash in, like, really hard. Because um, it doesn't take a lot to do that. And, you know, we sort of looked at that and went, huh, what if we take that design aesthetic, right? Like, the, the, the easy sort of mentality for games and stuff, and we just sort of amplify or put in a lot more budget into the product, right? We, we, we polish it up, we add voice acting, we add, um, you know animated puzzles we add like you know actual date interactions you know storyline plot narrative add in unlockables all that sort of stuff and basically you have what pieces is and we had a lot of experience as well um because the the other thing that didn't work out was when we started kinky uh, we were in uh talks with nintendo because you know m one of the side businesses that i have at the moment is is porting games from the pc to the nintendo switch okay um that's and rad. yeah you know I, I do i wear a lot of hats basically right? <laughs> uh and basically we were talking to nintendo and they were like yeah no we can accept these these types of games no problem as long as it's correctly rated for the eShop and it's actually put into the right place and you know it's you know it's not hidden or it's, i mean it's not it's not trying to subvert our, our story guidelines and stuff i'm like okay so we had a lot of games which were like, you know, games for children, which is to say that we would make like jigsaw puzzle games and stuff like that. And what we ended up finding was that um, the primary audience that would buy them would be adults um, because a lot of people just want to play like, you know, pop cap type games. <laughs> right? well, basically puzzle, capturing. Puzzle. Sorry, yeah. what you're saying no, I was going to say just basically capturing like the mobile gaming market because. I, I Sorry. No, I, no, no, no. You go, you go. Actually, with the puzzles, like, I can see the adult market because it's, like, it's chill. Like, exactly, yeah. Puzzles are chill. Like, it's something if you got a long day. I don't want to lose it Call of Duty all night. Like, I'm going to die. So I'll just play, like, one of these chill puzzle games. And if there's boobies, then all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, without that shit in there, yeah. I'm like, all right. To put it, to put it yeah. extremely simply and re reductively, the casual market, basically. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and... We, we we kind of when we first released it in early access, we kind of got like we kind of got two ends of the stick because some people were just like, and this is a really weird problem to deal with, but people were like, Oh man, it's a jigsaw puzzle game, cool, I get it. And then the other people would be like, What? It takes me five minutes to see tits? Unbelievable. <laughs> so, that makes it all the better. <laughs> oh, you you're like marinating win. your you're marinating your horny fucking gene that whole fucking time. It's great. Exactly. But what if I told you it doesn't it, you know, the horniness doesn't stay up um, unless you run into like unless you're constantly titillating people. And that's why you always see like uh, it's kind of a weird problem because like designing adult games is is very is very strange because no other game requires you to uh, keep the play like it completely hit, hit on dopamine the it's like a pacing right? issue like, almost right like it is it's a huge pacing issue and that's why um are you guys with familiar with the term called gore a g-o-r it's a it's a game development term called uh game over rape okay uh, no. and it and, it and it means when you lose that's when you get a sex scene right and it's like for whatever reason in game development, like in, in the current times, people are just like, oh yeah, no, I'll make a platformer and, you know, if you lose all your health to this enemy, the enemy puts a ding-dong in your butt. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, and it's like, in all honesty, that's sort of the, the mentality of developers right now. And I'm just like, okay, but that's fundamentally flawed. Like, in terms of, like, progression as a video game developer, you want people to, like, excel at playing a game and progress and move and stuff like that. But... In, in that situation, GOR means that in order for you to get what you want from the game, you actively have to lose. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like a weird hill to try and overcome. Um, and that's sort of why we started with pieces, because it was like, well, I mean, what if we just made it like Tinder? You know, like, what if, we, what if the game was just like Tinder and like, 
the only way that you could fail the game is if you accidentally answered the most yes no question wrong yeah and it was like completely obvious right there there are a few that got me i gotta say like they were worded well enough that i had to sit there and think for a second and i'm like i'm not actually sure which one is the correct answer here to get a picture but yeah i know there's a couple of characters in there that i specifically designed to to just be like okay you think you know you think uh, no like i want to i want to say puzzle again (laughs) I forget her name, but I want to say the French dancer girl comes to mind. Like I, I had such a problem with her at first. I could not wrap my head around what responses were the right ones. Yeah, no, that was, uh, all of those characters, um, uh, very interesting. It was very difficult to write them though. Mm-hmm. And, um, pieces of my heart is kind of an interesting one because, um, it's in a weird state. It's in a weird nebulous state where like people buy it on the regular now, but it doesn't make enough money for me to like want to like expand because we had in total uh, like 20 characters designed. Yeah. Uh, okay. We have like, we have like the entire scripts done for all of them. I think in the end we ended up having like 12 characters in total. Uh, so some is of there, them were, like, sorry, no, sorry. Now some of them were like specifically from like tie-ins from other games and stuff like that. Yeah. But, I know um, the artist, we, um, Erka Root, I know you got his girl Samara, uh, Samara in there because uh, you guys are also publishing uh, Wet Nightmares, which is his visual novel. Yes, we are. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there's a like, for example, uh, we had all the voice actors cameo is done and stuff like that. It's yeah. A, but like, it's such a it's such an expensive game to produce. So that, here's the thing that I tell you: 2D games super expensive to produce. Like really super expensive like like more than 3d like way more than 3d what's why though what what makes them more expensive to pr- produce because you'd think that 3d would be more expensive yeah um well i mean maybe it doesn't mean like maybe it's not so expensive for like general people but w- when it comes to like professional game development stuff generally we try and use the assets as much as possible so like okay. let's say you you make like a uh, like a 2D um, visual novel stand-in, right, as a portrait, right? And, you know, this girl needs to have, like, three mouth flaps. And that's it, right? Like, pretty simple. You can't use that image anywhere else, though. Okay. Right? You you can use it in key art, but, you know, then your game just looks cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't use it in, like, sex scenes because you need a brand new pose. Yeah. So imagine every single time that you need a new application for this girl, you need to redraw everything from scratch. And let's say that you actually have high quality art and you have a lot of rendering time and all that sort of stuff. That takes literally weeks to do. Whereas mm-hmm. 3D, you spend I, like <laughs> a, a week or two, a week and a half maybe, building like a really highly detailed sculpt. And then you spend the rest of the time rigging it and waiting it and all that sort of stuff. But then you can use that exact model to create new key art as many times as you want. You can pose them in a different thing. You can like the applications for using those assets exponential. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying now because it, it's kind of the difference between you know 2D art and 3D art. Like you're saying, um, just do, having done frame by frame 2D animation, it's fr- like the time consuming part is in the actual animation because you have to draw every new frame, whereas when it comes to 3D mm-hmm. animation, you just have that model and then you just the the the, the time consuming thing with the 3D is making the model and setting it up. But then once it's mm-hmm. done, it's done. And then yeah. all like like the animation comes a lot easier. So I yeah, actually that makes a lot of sense. I didn't think about like, that. So so when 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 it comes to because <laughs> we're making another 2D game right now, and it's like I just sometimes I just want to pull my hair out of how long it takes. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like it takes <laughs> I yeah. mean, the art looks great. In the end, it looks good. And a lot of people are just like, why don't you just make more 2D games? Like, bro, let me tell you. <laughs> You're like, bro. So, no. with having those extra character models and like everything voiced out, are you wanting to go back and do another piece of my heart, like a sequel or or not? I mean, like, yeah, like, it's just time consuming, like you were saying and stuff. Is it, is it in the cards for you at the moment? Or like, are you just like, we're going to move on and keep doing other things? So... I mean, here's the thing. I I love the idea of doing casual games. Like the other mm-hmm. 2D game that we're making right now is also casual. Um, but having said that, we are right now um, 
Okay, so now that we got the next round of financing for the company, one of the things I'm doing is actually spending uh, a majority of it on uh, doing R and D, so building tech and stuff like that. So, um, what we're trying to produce right now is a model and physics system using the Unreal Engine, so that we can. Um, okay, so <laughs> here's a problem that I'm trying to solve. This is this is how <laughs> stupid. This is how stupid adult game. Uh, development is like okay i'm like okay Labia i have some physics. breasts no no, no. <laughs> i have some breasts right and i'm trying to save animation time because i want to put these breasts inside of a tight t-shirt right so how do you make it so that the breasts look real without literally just like loading a piece of cloth on top of it or like manually re-sculpting the bones to make it look like it's like fit inside the the top the answer is uh really complicated physics Mm -hmm. um so what if i told you also i wanted to make it so that i can say i don't know at any point during a say a visual novel grab use the mouse cursor reach out grab the the top and just yank it down right what are what sort of implications would i have to do in order to do that and the, the standard answer would be well, you'd have to like hand animate everything that goes into that se- sequence, and I'm like, okay, well, that's that's annoying, mm-hmm. right? And that means that like every single time that I want to do that with every single character, let's say we make a video game where like you know it's a dating sim and you play as a character that can be an asshole to girls, and <laughs> at any point you can you can reach out and grab them while you're doing a visual novel scene, something mm-hmm. we're building right now, but um. If we had to hand animate every single model we put into this system, that's an astronomical amount of time. So we're trying to like simulate a system where like, okay, breasts are constrained by cloth and cloth has certain properties to it. And that's all that's all just programming, right? Like we don't have to worry about yeah. like hiring um, a person to sit down and, and wrestle with soft body physics, right? Like we don't have to do that. Like but the thing is, it takes time to do that, right? So that's that's sort of what we're doing. So to answer your question, will I do pieces of my heart too? Yes. It won't be 2D though if I get this system working, mm-hmm. <laughs> because uh, it would literally be like a uh, we would we would we would build all this tech and then we could use it in all the future games that we have. So there's right. no reason for me to ever mm-hmm. go back to 2D if I can get this system to work. The You're way essentially that building a kinky engine, <laughs> as it were. That's yeah, a sweet. Yeah. That's, that's awesome, dude. That's super rad. Like, good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, like, isn't isn't cloth simulation, cloth physics simulation, like notoriously difficult? That's why, like, in every video game where someone gets goes to bed, they just lie on top of the covers. <laughs> like, well, it's it's also you got to think of it like. Um, so one of the things we spent a lot of time doing in pieces, and no one gave a fuck about, was um, the cum. We we act yeah. Yeah, the cum. We we spent a long time uh, building a physics system for cum, and you know what it ended up being? It ended up being so gosh dang expensive on users' computers that <laughs> you know we ended we ended up we ended up having to scale it back anyway. And um, it's just one of those things where like everyone's just like, oh cool, you can do that, and then they move on, and it's like <laughs> so it's the same thing. It's just it's the same thing with like fucking Rockstar games. It's like. No one's going to notice a guy getting into bed, or if they do, that's it. They're just like, okay, cool, thanks. He got like Red Dead Redemption Two. Every little minuscule detail of the animation, where it's like, look, he actually skinned that rabbit, and it like looks like it. But it's just, oh, I finally have a, I finally have a 2080 super, so now I can finally see the cum physics in pieces of my heart. Exactly, but like all the all the work you put into those tiny little things, generally people don't care about. Right, (sighs) like. I mean, like, uh, it was a huge novelty for the horse testicles in Red Dead Redemption 2, but, like, did anyone who's actually played the game sit there and go, yeah, I think I'm glad I bought this game. I think think we all know some furries. I I think my wife might have for a little bit, yeah. But, um... You you know what I mean, like, majority of players wouldn't care. Wouldn't care the slightest. I would like to say, personally, I noticed the cum physics, especially when you guys added in the unlockable colors for the cum... (laughs) Like when I got black and brown and yellow going in there, it was a fucking riot. But uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> adding the, uh, the the adding the brown color was like I really didn't want to do it, but we had so many. 
we had so many people just be like, brown or a refund, bitch. And I'm like, God damn it. She's <laughs> you like, you ungrateful fuckers? All right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's fine. It's my no, comment. I, it'll be brown it. if I want it to be. Yeah. I mean, we, we had we had a lot of really unique systems that we wanted to add. But I think the best thing we ever did for that game, uh, like, voice acting is is such a, like, I don't want to say cheap because it's it's not, it's not like a, a cheap asset to add, but like in the grand scheme of things, like it adds so much to a product. Yeah. It just I definitely polish agree. it a little bit more. Um, and one of the things that, you know, felt out of place a lot, like, I don't know if you, I don't know when you played it, but um, the last patch that we add was like, like a conversation update, basically where we added like a, uh, about, an hour and a half's worth of recorded dialogue to the game for just like, you can now go through a dialogue tree with the girls during the f- first reward scene and you can actually have a conversation with them and stuff. Yeah. Like that. I remember the, I remember um, the update when that like, or the, the steam dev diary thing when that came out, I was like, damn, a mm-hmm. whole, that's a lot of lines. Yeah. And that's, I really wish we added that from the start because like it, it added so much to the game, but I can almost guarantee you that the, the people that bought it early wouldn't have gone back and to experience it. So it's like, it's one of those weird things where like a lot of lessons learned is just like, yeah, here's where you, these are the areas you polish the game. These are the areas where you can just ignore because, you know, it, what makes the most sense in a vi- like, I don't know. I hate playing games where I have to read so much. So <laughs> that's just like a personal <laughs> thing for me. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's, 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 uh, we said this when we were talking to the, the voice actress for Q from Honey Pop, just like it is, it is amazing how much better the product is just by virtue of it having voice acting. And another similar thing you guys did was the cell phone, the, the, the conversation mid puzzle, which sort of helps with that pacing issue where you're kind of drip feeding the, uh, the, the titillation of the player so that like while they're solving this puzzle, but I was, I was waiting on every time that that thing would like buzz and I get a new thing to uh, talk to the girl. Mm-hmm. So it, it definitely like a hundred percent worked. Yeah. Like honestly, um, voice acting in these games is a huge game changer. Yeah. I, because I, it, makes it, it makes it feel more lived in if that makes sense. And it makes it feel more quote real just because it's like, Oh, like it's just fun. I love and it. I it's hate so reading. But, uh, um, <laughs> yeah. No, the other example I can think of that, that that was, uh, and I guess it's not done yet, but Subverse has, like, as far as I know, full voice acting, and it's way better for it. For that Especially game, if you can like, get good performances out of your voice actors and just really nail it. Dude, pun intended, that game definitely blue-balled me, because I thought there was so much more. <laughs> like, I was so stoked to play that game, and then it was like... I, was like, oh, I mean, that, that that's that's a perfect, perfect example of, like... Um, like, I can almost guarantee you that those guys didn't know how to spend their money. Right. Um, and, you know, Studio Foul is like an animation company mm-hmm. and it shows, like, mm-hmm. it really should. But, like, when it, when it comes to, like, the engagement and the loops and stuff in the game, you could v- easily tell that shit was farmed out somewhere. Um, and th- that was a huge disappointment because, like, you know, how hard would it have been for them to be like, okay, let's staff up and have a gaming division inside of Studio Foul? Right. Right. Could have been, could have been a good way to spend the money, and also could have like secured like future endeavors for them pretty easily. But right. I can under, I can understand like keeping capital in the company, but like you know, to a degree, you have to kind of stuff up. You have to kind of right. keep growing, and that's sort of why like right now, like I don't know how much you know about what the company's doing right now, but um, we have a looter, which you know. Uh, that game came out too early, so that, that <laughs> <laughs> I was I I, guess, I was checking out the I was checking out the Steam reviews on it today. Just as it's like, why is it mostly negative? And I guess it's just yeah, it's just too early. But uh, for those at home too listening, early. also because uh, we had an association with uh, a game that was really popular in Chinese, and uh, a lot of the early reviews was yeah. So mm-hmm. we had to pull all marketing for that game like super quick. Right. Uh, and we're, we're going to climb back up. You know, we only released it like three, four weeks ago. Though, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like for, for those not in the know at the home, by the way, Eluder is the early access game they just put out that's like a twin stick lewd shooter, basically. Oh, that's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Our major inspiration for that was Binding of Isaac. Um, yeah. 
you know, so the the first reason why we released it a little early is because you know I'm 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 about to have my first kid, so it's like, um, oh. I just I just wanted to try and push work out of the way so much, but like, yeah, right. that's on be- me. That was a- before it becomes like <laughs> too difficult to keep up with, right? Yeah. yeah. Um. So we've also got Sapphire Safari, which started out as a Pokemon Snap ripoff. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. And event- eventually grew into its own open world photography uh, game. It's more, it's more like, it's more pinned to be more like Genshin Impact than it is supposed to be like uh, uh, Pokemon Snap now. But really, because yeah. the, the Steam, the mm-hmm. Steam um, description still says it's on Rails. I don't know if that is like not in the oh. cards anymore or no it's not on rails anymore it's open world and okay you walk around and find things and do stuff so is it, it yeah basically we 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 built it right yeah and the first prototype we had nice real good worked well and then we started uh building it out and we're like holy shit <laughs> there is like okay so the problem with pokemon snap is every single second of that roller coaster needs to be like the player needs to be fully engaged. Mm-hmm. You can't have a moment of downtime because if you do, people get bored. And um, that's really hard to do on a small team. That's why they had the fast forward Nintendo. button on uh, the N64 one. I don't know if they have it yet on the uh, the, the they new Switch do. one because I haven't played much of it yet, but yeah. yeah. We, they probably do, but this is... Uh, Sapphire is like our first game where we sort of like started teching up, right? Like, so... The sex system in Sapphire is really interesting. So it's a furry game, in case anyone didn't know. You walk <laughs> around an island and you you take photographs of uh, monster girls doing monster girl things. They never no. not do No! Monster. I got a boner. Shit! <laughs> uh, so basically, you know, the, 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 game, the current game loop is uh, you get uh, bounties. <clears throat> and uh, the idea is, is that they'll say like, hey, go take a photo of this particular monster girl doing this thing. And you're like, cool. And you go do that. That builds up a, um, uh, uh, some sort of hidden meter, uh, in the background that like, makes them more, um, uh, friendly towards you. Right. And then eventually you'll be able to walk up to them and hit E and go into like a play mode, which is where you can <coughs> like pet them. You can play, you know, rock, paper, scissors, you can feed them, you can throw a ball and they'll go get it. You know, that sort of stuff. Kind of like the Pokemon camp system. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Pokemon um, me or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, um, if they enjoy what you're doing, because, uh, you know, you can grab them and s- squeeze them and slap them and stuff like that, right? Yeah. We're definitely uh, reviewing you... this game someday. <laughs> yeah. we, uh, trust um... me, I, I've been excited for this one for a bit. <laughs> this uh, is in the yeah. cards, This one's man. been on my radar for a while, so. So uh, the next step is they present themselves and then you go into a fully dynamic uh, sex scene. So normally when games do this, they're like, oh, pick an animation, bro. We got like 30 of them. Newgrounds Flash game sex stuff, like meet and fuck, yeah. So we're not doing that uh, because that would be too easy. Uh, So what we're doing (laughs) is... What we're doing instead is... um, Basically, we're adding a dynamic animation layering system into the game. So basically what that means is you choose the bunny rabbit and you go, okay, what position do you want to mean? You, you tell them to go into a position. They animate into that position and then they idle. Um, and then you go, okay, I have a various selection of penises in front of me. I'm going to take, <laughs> I'm going to take two of them and I'm going to put one in the mouth and one in the anus, for right. example. And you can set different speeds for that stuff and she will animate around them. So if you take out one penis, she'll continue to animate and you put it back in. Like it's dynamic. It's layered. It sort of all comes together quite nice. Yeah. Like almost um, like procedural animation, I guess, in a sense. I, I'm not, not, not technically. So procedural, but yeah. Okay, yeah I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to like meet you halfway here. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the other thing that you can do is like, Another monster girl can walk in on the scene and you can like go, okay, you uh, sit on top of her face while mm-hmm. this is happening. And then it will <laughs> dynamically update. And then you can say, okay, I'm going to take another penis and put it into this new girl's face instead. And like you can sort of layer it and, and build upon the system. So, um, and then you can take out, you know, you can, you can come on them dynamically like we had in pieces where it's like all, oh, but this time, instead of it being like fluids, it's actually just like, uh, it's like a bone 
so we can apply physics and soft bodies to it. So it's a lot less render intensive. Okay. Um, and then you can pull out your photo and your uh, camera and you can take photos of them sort of thing, right? So you can set up these uh, very elaborate diorama scenes where everything is sort of happening and going about. And um, then when I explained, when I showed this to people, the first thing the audience was like, the first thing they requested was like, oh, can you put, can you put the player character into the scene and can it get fucked by a horse? And I'm like, <laughs> uh, as you do. Cause we have a horse monster girl in there. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. And we're just like, and we're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, because because it's just another model, right? So basically, you seem uh, now... you seem apprehensive to make the Mister Hand simulator, but I guess you're doing it. So yeah, I mean, so you know, it's that's that's pretty much it. Like it's, now we've got this really dynamic system, and and we were just like, huh. Oh. We're doing all this work to build this, like, I've never seen a sex system like this before, right? I mean, like, maybe there's a couple of systems like that where you can kind of sort of put anime girls in positions and do things to them, but... Yeah. Like, we've got a lot of really dynamic things in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that system and we're going to, like, start expanding on it for next games. And the next games and next games. So imagine, like, a, okay, so imagine this exact same system where you can do whatever you want, but we limit the amount of tools you have to only have like your hands because you can you you know select your hands and also like a tongue, or whatever, mm. and put them onto different things. So you know it, it works the same way as like the penises. Mm. Um, <laughs> so you're limited to uh, your hands, which are also what you use to take the tools. So if you're like grabbing a boob, you have to then take your hand off the boob and grab a penis and put it into a thing, right? So it's kind of like kind of like a like almost like a VR light experience, I would yeah, say. Like yeah. it kind of works like that. Um so imagine imagine that scene, but like it's in a visual novel. So you go through a visual novel and then you get to a sex scene and boom, you have this fully dynamic rendered 3D sex experience. And we don't allow you to change the girl's position. Like, so for example, let's say you're on a, a very short animation of like, um, say, you meet a girl at a bar and you, you succeed at the visual novel puzzle. And then she takes you into the bathroom and she has one position in the bathroom and you just do your business, right? That, that's sort of what we're sort of looking at when we, when we take these sort of systems and we go, okay, well, we've done all this work. Let's not throw it away for the next game. Let's sort of... Expand upon it and yeah. make it into the, the the kinky system repertoire that we have, and that's sort of what we're doing here. We're just sort of like, you know, building the tech, and then, and the tech is sort of where it's at for us. Like we, we just want to keep building the tech because, fu like a future game, for example, might be super easy to make because all you need to do is like make a three D model, make some backgrounds, make some story, and do some voice acting because the systems. Yeah, the engine's already We've already there. built the systems. Yeah. yeah. So don't be like Square Enix. Don't build a system for ten years just to throw it away for the next game or whatever they did. Uh we'll probably end up doing this. <laughs> oh, you're honest I mean, yeah, I mean, because you might you might do all this work and then you like and then you get to the next game and then all of a sudden people want something completely different. Mm, like, yeah. You know, it's hard to say. But you know, we can still take what we've built and build systems around it and I was going to say, I think if you make a sex game, the next game, people are probably still going to want the sex. You know, I might be wrong on that one, but. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, Pieces of My Heart uses a program called Spine to do all the animations. And Spine is great. It's like live 2D, but like specifically built to work with Unity. Right. And um, that's a really powerful program. But. You know, you need a lot of stuff to get it to work, and you <laughs> need like good animators and stuff like that. So I was like, ma making a system where we don't have to worry about like, like, because you know, we'll have an also, also like every single model will use the Unreal Engine mannequin, for example. So when you rig a model, as long as it like has similar bone structure, which is, you know, most humanoids have the exact same rigging substructure. You can literally just slap it into existing animations that you've built ten years ago, and it will use those animations fine. So, yeah. when it comes to the sex system, we don't have to build new animations. Like, let's say we want to add something unique, that just goes into the pool, right? So every time we add a new animation, it's just the library gets much much larger. So, um, hypothetically, 
new games should always have a lot more content, but it should also have all the old content as well. So, okay. yeah. Uh, anyway, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> um, man. I got a. F- I mean, we got a few. Uh, this is going way more in depth than I thought. By the way, you are you are excellent at uh, explaining all of this stuff. But um, it's my job. I mean, I just look at you guys as investors, right? And I have to explain the dumbest shit to investors. They're like, "Can you make cyberpunk?" It's like, "Yes, just <laughs> not how you want it, though." Yeah, anyway. yeah. <laughs> you want it? Um, I don't know. Like, where where does the name Kinky Fridays come from? I've always kind of wondered that. <laughs> It's kind of a really uh, dumb so, question, you know, but I mean, it's kind of weird because I've had a couple interviews now, and every single time people always ask me this question. I don't know why. Like, what? What? Let me ask you. What inspired you to ask me that question so that it, I can? It, it's just a cool name. Like Kinky Fridays is such an iconic sounding name for like the kind of stuff you're doing, and the logo looks awesome. So I guess I was just wondering. Like, I mean, it, it it's a striking name so how did you come up with it uh you're gonna be disappointed (laughs) Uh, so okay so as i said i'm australian i live in poland um and all of my business partners locally are polish right um so the uh the wife of my business partner was like she works in the same office as us for another company um you know, she's always saying like, oh, it's Friday, time to get kinky. Like, you know, like, as a, like, not, not like in a sexual way or whatever. So when we're coming up with the uh, names for this, like uh, the, f- the first run was like something like Red Toadstool or something like that. It just wasn't working, right? Like, and uh, it was a very phallic sort of imagery and it wasn't something that I was kind of interested in doing. And um, basically I was just like, oh, what if we just called it Kinky Fridays? And... I was like, it's like, yeah, that just works. Like it just, it just works. And there's no one else with it, with that name, as far as I can tell. Um, the only problem is it uses the day of the week to like mix it. And it also uses probably one of the like most commonly used words in this industry. Mm-hmm. Um, but at, at least lets people it. know like what kind of products you guys sell. So there's not like a question at that yeah. point. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely not as on the nose as some of the other companies I've seen, but mm. um, yeah, I mean, I'm you know, <sighs> it, it works. So yeah, <laughs> there's not much to it other than that. It's just like it's kind of like, oh, how do you come up with any company names? Normally for me, it's like I mix two words together. You know, yeah. what I mean, like uh, yeah, uh, like Desire was desirable and dependable mixed together, and I was like, okay, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> that'll do uh in the end it doesn't really yeah it doesn't really matter like the the coolest names for companies are the ones that are like six to seven characters long and a single word and those are next to impossible to try and work out these days right because um, everyone's done it yeah so the next best thing is to like kind of hybridize it or something like that and uh it's a weird one yeah it's definitely weird yeah um Maybe. What what would you say, like, you guys only have a few games out right now, like a couple and more on the way, but what, what would you say, mm. like, art-wise or gameplay-wise would be your biggest inspirations? Clearly, Pokemon Snap was there for uh, the Safari game and a Binding of Isaac for Eluder, but do you have yep. any other games that are just, like, maybe you want to make a <laughs> ma- make a lewd-style game of in the future? Uh... Okay, so right now, is that a dog? That's my dog. Yeah, she's uh, she's okay. having a little dream. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, so oh, good. Um, so okay, so we're just sort of in the middle of like sort of planning the next style of game that we're doing, and uh, a lot of people give me a lot of shit for this, but. Um, can I, Konami released a game a while back called Metal Gear Survive. Are you guys <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm acutely aware of it. Yeah. Okay. So that game, like, let's say you remove the Metal Gear branding from it. And in terms of it actually being a video game, so it's, there are, there are, it's a survival game that is wide, right? 
Mm-hmm. So it's the same. It's the same vibe as like a subnautica, where a subnautica, like in order to progress, you got to go deeper. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Metal Gear Survive, you have to go wide, right? Um, so the next style of game that we're looking at building is um, sort of like a like I've always wanted to do a survival game as well. Like I, I'm I'm really into like crafting games, survival games, yeah. base building games, right? Like the the sort of that's the sort of stuff that really makes my brain go, yeah. That <laughs> and like uh the dungeon dungeon uh exploring games like the uh you know like uh Legend of Grimrock or something like that. Like yeah. those sorts of games also get me as well. But I'm not I'm not stupid enough to try and make a Legend of Grimrock right now cuz um that's also like a very tropey sort of porn game <laughs> right right like a lot of people a lot of people make those really silly ones in like rpg maker or something like that so mm-hmm. I'm not i can gonna, hear I'm i can that, hear uh our other co-host schweiss getting hard right now because he loves conan exiles and it sounds like you're looking at possibly making a lewd conan of exi- conan exiles type game something like that but uh one of the one of the things that you have to recognize as a as a small developer is like where you where your limitations are at and yeah you know when i when i look at a project like that i see okay they have enormous landscapes like absolutely enormous like you could spend years building just an absolute fuckload of environments to to populate a world like this and you know i've got a way of fixing that uh, that'll make it that'll scope the game down a little bit better for like a 10 person team you know um and that's sort of what we're looking at right now is sort of like okay how do we make a game feel big you know feel enormous without actually building the enormity right like that's right. that's sort of the thing that we're attempting to do now so if we can overcome like the new R and D phase that we're on, uh, if we can overcome the pitfalls of making a uh, a survival game, because you know we've got like uh, you know we've built a lot of locomotion systems. Are you guys, do you guys know what locomotion is? If I say that word, or uh, in terms of game development, no, I know what a train is. So. <laughs> Okay, so I mean, that's, uh, train is a good example. So locomotion literally means like when a player walks, moves, jumps, climbs, like falls down, climbs a ladder, shoots a gun, picks up an item, that sort of stuff. That's all locomotion. So, so just like, general imagine, like player get, movement, essentially. Yeah, but like imagine, imagine, not not so much like that because anyone can make player movement. But real locomotion is like. Uh, like The Witcher Three, for example, when Geralt of Rivia like walks after you stop him after you like you push forward and he takes two steps. Okay. Uh, um, and that that sort of builds a game feel. That's sort of the locomotion of that game. It's a, it's 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 like a personality of its own. Yeah. So building a locomotion system is like is like building a game's personality, right? So The Last of Us uh, versus, um, something else would have a different game feel because of the way that the locomotion feels different. Last so of us, for us versus super Mario 3d world. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. So the locomotion feels vastly different. So, um, we've, we've, we've kind of like been building, establishing locomotion systems and stuff like that. And a lot of that comes from, um, it's kind of going to sound really janky, but um, working with uh, motion capture um, by using like webcams and, you know, motion capture has gotten really, really easy to do these days, especially with like VR headsets and stuff like that. You can, yeah. You can very easily like one of one of the most annoying things to animate in the entire world is like, OK, I need like 40 different idols. Ah, uh, Yeah. So what do you do? Um, you just get motion capture and then you just modify the motion capture that you get. Like, so, you know, imagine creating like three different animations of a guy, like just sitting in a chair. Mm. Like if you like had to like, that's all locomotion as well. Like the, the little nuances stuff. of just sort of like not being able to keep your body completely still because none of us yeah. can. Exactly. And so, you can kind of tell cause like, when a game character just sits there and is completely inert and just like, it feels stiff. Mm-hmm. So yeah. 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 So that, that's one of the things that we're building and that that's a big one. 
Um, and once we've overcome that, and the other one is uh, trying to get rid of the dead pigeon look that 3D characters tend to have. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I mean by that is, like, there are certain mm-hmm. facial movements that everyone knows exist, but they can't, like, they can't elaborate on it. They can't, like, say what's missing. There's like, oh, that doesn't look right. That, you know, that uncanny The thing. uncanny valley, so, yeah. Well, not so much the uncanny valley for like, mo- like it's like motion, right? So imagine when you're talking, your head creases or like the, one of the more important ones that, I, that I've sort of only discovered very recently is um, if you're looking at a character, right? And you're watching his face and his eyes just straight, right? There's a, there's a system called like um, where, you, where you slightly change the direction of what they're looking at like ever so slightly like every couple of minutes like a, because you know the eyes are always darting around in real life and yeah the trick is you, you make a system in the game that sort of like emulates that a little bit and also like makes it so that they blink every once in a while means that animators don't have to do that and it'll make a character feel more real like even mm-hmm. if the even if the fucking i don't know a cat girl in anime right <laughs> You st- yeah, you still have to do these things because if you don't, oh, it just, just a, like I just imagined an anime cat girl doing the face zoom in unblinking motion of like an Oblivion NPC, and I just had like a fucking shiver go up my spine. Yeah, exactly right. Like, um, people notice that stuff, and mm. like one of, one of the best. Like, there's a really good example of this um, with the new Final Fantasy remake, uh, seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, I think it's seven. Um, where they show like characters just sort of like slightly looking away, or like when they talk, their their brows furrow depending on how intense the audio is. Like yeah. stuff like that is just like it is building those systems means that your game becomes more alive. Like just from a, like a small little amount of polish makes the game feel way better. Yeah, and that's the sort of stuff we. I want to invest in right now. That's just the stuff that I need to complete before we start building the next phase of projects that we have. Because well, otherwise, it like, it's just, yeah. sorry, I'm just coughing. I apologize. That's no, okay. Good. Please continue. No, I was going to say like it just seems like it's a natural progression in, in what you're doing, and especially in the games as you evolve as a company as well. Mm. And the, the faster you get in front of the curve, you're going to be able to do these things and. We were talking earlier about how like how difficult is it to sell some of these games. You can be that one that's like, well, we're developing these and we're ahead of everyone else, so they want to buy our games because it's that much different. There's like that much yeah. oomph in there. Yeah, I mean, it, it it is like that, but there's also a case of like, it's there is like an entire entire uh, loop that you need to go through in order to sell a game on Steam. It's mm. like, it's kind of like a. It's a weird nightmare to have (laughs) because like you have to, you have to really play the steam's algorithm. If you want to succeed on steam, it's these Um, damn algorithms, man. Like (laughs) you just like, it's these, it's these little unwritten rules that you have to try and like figure out. I imagine. Yeah. It's it's very strange, but you know, I like we hire people specifically just to understand the algorithm. mm -hmm. Um, And you know, you can you once you once you've done it, once you've unlocked the secret, it's very easy to do until Steam changes it and they change it every three months or something like that. So <laughs> you're like great. Yeah. So if like for example, it's someone's entire job to literally just like read Steam news and talk to people at Steam and get the insider scoop about how things work. Because otherwise you get left in the dust, you know. Like, yeah. Yeah. Especially with so much stuff getting added all the time, like it, mm-hmm. it's like I guess it's like I guess it's like the gaming equivalent of YouTube. Not 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 that it's that easy to publish games on Steam, but I mean it might as well be compared to. Well, I don't know. I mean, like there's itch and stuff, but that's like a whole different thing. Um, oh, uh, look there 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 are ways to abuse itch as well, and we definitely do it. <laughs> um, I mean, like to put it in perspective, like. You know, you can you can easily make forty grand a month just on itch. Like most people don't know that because they think, oh, you know, I make like ten sales a month on itch. It's like, yeah, but you could also be making literally like thousands of sales on on itch very easily. Right? Yeah. Um, but you have to play to the algorithm. Like for example, if your game is uh like 
shitty looking, like PlayStation era, and also a horror game. <laughs> and you have a and you have a free version of it. Mm-hmm. You can literally like scoop up money from it and just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Paying for my new house with this stuff, right? I know all about um, that shit. I've 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 bought many a puppet combo game off there. So yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's partly the reason why Wet Nightmares is doing so goddamn well on that site is because it's literally a perfect product for for itch. You know what I mean? Like yeah. It's, uh, Hey, what yeah. if you could fuck the girl from the ring or whatever? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That that makes a lot of sense. I didn't realize it was. I didn't realize it was all algorithmic on Steam. But I guess I kind of should have figured at a certain point. <laughs> kind of like every every. I mean, cu- well, like every curated. And he is because it's, he's figuring this stuff out, and you're like, Meh. yeah. Well, it, it's just I mean, like. like it's it's every curated media system, so it really, yeah, that that does make a lot of sense. So the next um, the next sort of direction we're going in is, you know, we're always talking to Nintendo. So one of the things we're looking at doing is um, making SKUs of our games to go onto the Switch. I was going to um, ask. I, I forgot to put that on the sheet, but I was going to ask about that sort of thing because i i know for a fact that like some of the wayne cloud like the sakura games some of those got on switch i assume mm-hmm. censored skews but you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah so yeah so um i mean th- there's a limit like for example we couldn't put pieces on there mm-hmm. no way in hell like um there is no way to gut pieces of my heart and then also make it a functional game but um something like a Ludo, you know we can put that on there pretty easily yeah. In fact, um, one of the we're doing like a like a art overhaul for that game at the moment um, because you know we were gonna do it eventually in early access, but you know people <laughs> wanted it earlier. Obviously. Yeah. Um, so one of the things you're doing is like you know just make all the assets like non-nude, remove all the sex functions from the game, and all of a sudden you have a fairly competent uh, twin stick shooter. You yeah, know, like these are the sorts of things that you can you can sort of design a game around, um, and then there'll be purists out there, Ugh. many purists that'll be like, "But that goes against building a dog." And it's like, "Yeah, but bitch, I'm running a business here." <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta try to sell as many like, yeah, yeah, dude, that's it's the name of the game, man. There's no shame in it. When it gets put, when it gets the yeah, when it gets the safe for work skew, is it going to be called a chaster or something? So I'm trying to think of the opposite of lewd. It's just a, it, it, I mean, the word eluder comes from the word elude, uh, yeah. which is a real word, which means dodge and parry. So like, oh, you know, okay. Sorry, the word I, I thought you were in English. It's crazy. Oh no, I okay <laughs> now now I see what he's saying. I man. I'm not doing great this episode in terms of like being smart. Not that I normally brain, do, big, but big brain name. yeah, I got a big head and a little brain inside of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, That's why that, I draw that hentai. Kind of like, exactly. <laughs> we, exactly. Um, I mean, that, that, that naming that game was kind of like a stroke of genius as far as I'm concerned. Like I've named games before, uh, but that one literally came to me when I was like sleeping and I just, you know, woke up eyes wide and I was like, <laughs> Holy fuck! How did I not think of this before? Like, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's way rad. Um, um so you're talking. Sorry, a little bit earlier, you were talking about like how you design some of the characters, right? Like mm. with four questions, like you're like the catchy questions. But like with that, are they like out of pieces of my heart? Are they some of your favorite characters, or like do you have any favorite characters from any of the games you've developed or gone through that you like? Uh... I mean, if I had to, like, okay, so we have the the company mascot, which is in pieces. She's Frida, like the tutorial. Yeah. Frida, yeah. Uh, it was she, definitely, by the way, you're finally getting fan art of her from me on the uh, thumbnail for this episode. So that'll be awesome. Oh, great. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, th- that character was kind of fun because uh, when okay, so I always had this idea for for a mascot character to to sort of help the company, and I was like, well, okay. We need like I want to make make a character that is both good to meme, um, mm-hmm. and also like really fun to put into games and be like, I'm gonna break the fourth rule so that I can talk about the Xbox controller, for example. Yeah, you know? yeah. 
without without breaking uh, without breaking characters. But you you know you need you need an established character to do that. And you know, um, Frida was a good choice. And I I remember when I uh, so her voice actor, uh, Cumbom, as she goes by <laughs> online. Uh, I, by the way, I love these voice actresses' names and stuff on Twitter. It's like the greatest oh, yeah. shit ever. Sorry. Cumbom so, so is absolutely fucking fantastic. And you should probably, uh, if you want to talk to someone about like doing stuff in, in, in the industry, you should talk to her for sure. Okay. But um, when, when, we, when we first started, like she was brand new in the industry. And I had, uh, I sent out a, 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 an audition. To, to fill the role of Frida. And I needed someone who was, you know, in the same personality vibe as what we needed. Like someone who is literally like okay with being like a C tier waifu, you know, basically, <laughs> right? Um that that's sort of what I what I call Frida. She's like, you know, she knows it. She doesn't care. Um and I remember I went through all of these Things. And I sat down, I was like, oh man, there's so many of these uh, auditions. We got we got like, you know, 120 or whatever, right? Yeah. I was going through them all and I was like, and I finally nailed down like the top two. And then come bomb like bursts into the room and she's like, hey, can I do an audition? I'm like, I guess I already closed it, but fine, whatever. And she we we I she didn't even audition and she was literally like memeing at me the entire time. I'm like, okay. <laughs> uh I don't I don't even need to hear what's going on. You can just have the character. It's fine. So she's been perfect for it ever since. So Frida is a good one. Um, I didn't really like her sex pose in the game too much, though. But my favorite one for sure, and um, Twitter would agree with me, is... And we did make a joke about that in the game, by the way, in case in case <laughs> you miss it. But the best one is definitely Amanda. Hands yeah. down. Yeah. Um, when, like, Pixie Willow voiced her, and I was like, okay, listen... I need I need a voice for a character who's literally a like a gamer gremlin, um, who's also like up her own ass because she's a uh, influencer, right? And she mm-hmm. knows it, right? And she was like, okay, and she fucking nailed it on the first go, and it was like, <laughs> she's great. By the way, like- uh, she follows me, and I'm in her Discord server. She's she's a peach. She's fantastic. Yeah, and uh, on- honestly, like. Like she um, enjoyed playing that character so much, she uses it on a like reel for like uh, voice work and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, like Am- Amanda was just like perfect, and people loved that character so much they were literally like, "Yo, can we get like a gamer girl visual novel from you that's just like a <laughs> Am- just like Amanda's story?" And I'm like, "Sure, <laughs> yeah, okay, we can look at that eventually." Um, the problem is that that would be like, you know, Carlos, the guy who does the drawing for everything. He's like, yeah, um, he's doing wet nightmares now. So I, I can't pull him off that shit. Right. And right. We, we already, we already pulled, we already pulled him off wet nightmares to do pieces. So you know, I kind of need to get him back on that. But, um, eventually, yeah, we'll, we'll look at doing it. And, um, I don't know. That's going to, that's going to be the weirdest thing ever. It's going to be like. You know that Coca Cola ad that's going around right now, where they're like, like esports gamers, and they're like, oh yeah, no. With the, with the <laughs> I'm sorry, orc. I don't watch a lot of TV, so I'm, I, hey, I, 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 they pull their ad like my local movie theater because I go to movies a lot. It's it's on. They do that Coke one, and I'm like, I don't know. That's literally <laughs> what the game is going to be, by the way. Like, <laughs> yeah, I played. Dude, I'll be honest, man. I'll fucking play the shit out of that. Um, except with a lot more anal sex. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't have to sell me more than you did, but I mean, all right, here we are. Here we go. That might yeah, that might have uh, that might have uh, contributed to Amanda's popularity in the game too, is because she's just raring to go right away, just like yeah, up the pooper, yeah. let's do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was uh, it was yeah, very fortuitous that one, and like she was. Out of all the girls, because I wrote the girls, like we have a we have an author now, but um when when like and he wrote all the uh extended dialogue. Yeah, the, the conversation day, trees. Right? But, but all of the um all of the like the text stuff I had to write, and some of them was so fucking hard to write. Like <laughs> like um like <sighs> Madison, for example, very difficult to write. Like, how do you how do you make someone who's intelligent 
uh, like hyper intelligent, um, disgustingly horny, and also like um, just like way smarter than you'll ever be. Like it's yeah. such a hard character to write. Like all that stuff. Like I struggled. I struggled. <laughs> I'm not a writer, <laughs> and I struggled with that shit so hard. But Amanda I- was just like, yeah, that's my wheelhouse. Yeah. Game of shit stain? Yeah, no, I got that. She's and like, um, like, what's the anime with the with the girl who's like embarrassed all the time? She has the dark circles under her eyes. She's like that character, but like if she had any modicum of like, uh, I think I know like, the one you're talking about. The the one that everyone Watamote. Like, oh, Watamo- it's, it's like the main character of Watamote. If she had like any inkling of like uh, self confidence, yeah. You say you're a bad writer, but like the writing in that is is really good. Yeah, like, I, I really enjoyed it. Like you did a great job. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, a lot of it was based on personal experiences with Tinder, so like it's I, uh, you, that's where you got to take it from. Because like I don't know who like again not to suck Honey Pop's dick, but I, I don't know who wrote all the girls in Honey Pop, but like <laughs> th- they have this like down to earth feel, but also like they don't feel like they were written by women. You know what I mean? I feel like it was like the main dude who programmed that game that wrote all the dialogue on that because it, it yeah. feels kind of. It definitely feels feels like a dude wrote it. it yeah, feel... not in a bad way per se. I, I was laughing the whole time, but it was the same thing with Pieces of My Heart. There was a lot of dialogue there where I was just like, I was totally engaged, especially like, oh, what's her what's her nuts? Um, is is it Madison the one that that has sex with you on the dance floor? Yes, or, it's Madison. Yeah, yeah, just completely 100 percent engaged the whole time because it's just like it's like that dream fantasy where you're just like man that'd be sick that's never going to happen in real mm-hmm. life but good thing this is a video game yeah no there was um like we have one date that's basically completed um we just we just need to do um a couple more scenes and do a bit of voice acting um which is we might not get to it, so I don't know how much I want to say. But like, right, hey, right. Uh, it's it's a girl where you go to a uh, bar with, and then you uh, you you take her in the uh, public restroom, and the restroom is fucking filthy, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> like, like disgusting, like graffiti on the wall, all the worst shit ever. And it was such a fun scene to just <laughs> build, right? Um. But, you know, it's just one of those things where, like, it literally costs so much to, to build a new date for pieces. Like, yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's such a shame. Like, if it was way cheaper, I'd be like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's add all the girls. Because there's, there's definitely some really good girls that we didn't release. Like, for example, there was one that was, um, uh, she has, like, severe daddy problems and she's, like, <laughs> the stupidest character in, the, in, in there. So, like, and you take her to the beach and she's, like, literally, like, building sandcastles in front of you and you're just like man i don't know if i want to have sex with this girl or not like but then you do it right yeah and, yeah because you, you're already I'm there gonna do it. i'm still gonna nut yeah yeah like <laughs> exactly so um and you know her whole thing was like you know we, we want to add in a bunch of like fetishes in the game so we had and she was like the one that is like the the baby right like you know the one saying daddy all the time and all that shit right so yeah um we had a bunch of characters like that. Um, you know, we had, we had one, like also there's like a, I don't know if you noticed it, but there was like a weird um, meta story going on, which we never got to really allude to too much because you need the other characters for that. But for example, Amanda and um, Mildred are sisters. Um, oh. No, no one fucking noticed that. Not hmm. a single person noticed that. I think I'm going to do last... all the playthrough. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah they have, I'm going to catch these. They have the same last name, and then some of the newer characters reference other characters. Like, for example, um, the British girl that we have—I forget it, uh, Sky- uh, Skyla. Um, she is, you know, doing art for a novel cover that uh, later on in the game there was going to be an author that was going to write a book that was going to use her art. Like, all the characters are somewhat weirdly connected okay. in a way. Um, I thought it was going to be like, a little never... like on Tinder because I've definitely had people that I've like hooked up with on Tinder and like, like let's go to a party and it's like oh fuck you don't like people I know in real life. Like, it's <laughs> exactly. Like... It, it's kind of one of those weird things where like the, the goal was to like um, eventually make it so that you know the char- the main character the hero as we called him <laughs> um, 
Yeah, you know, what else are you going to call him? He's just some dude. Right. <laughs> like, just call well, I love, how, I love how the official art also just depicts him as like a pure white being, like with no hair and like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you talking? Are you talking about the no way fag meme that we made? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> great. That's the other thing too. I, I love, I love uh, how liberal the sense of humor. Not, not literally liberal, but I mean, like, I love how liberally the the sense of humor is is spread throughout the game. Where like you guys aren't afraid to make like the no fag, uh, the no way fag meme, like in the in the in the Steam like update page. It's just, it's just great shit. <laughs> that stuff was like, like the, the amount of people that don't understand that fills me <laughs> full of joy. Like it literally fills me full of joy that people don't understand where that's coming from. Oh my god! And it's 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 fine if you don't understand it, but like also people are just like, what the hell is this? Like, yeah, that's offensive. I was like, nah, look, dude. <laughs> if you only understood, <laughs> if they could just uh, Google that phrase and find the original image, like it's not that hard. Yeah. But whatever. Yeah. Um, also, we did the um, uh, those are we. One of the major complaints we had when we first released pieces, this is this is sort of going way back, was um, uh, people were writing negative reviews. They're like, it's a fucking jigsaw puzzle game, bro. What? Negative yeah. review, jigsaw puzzle game. I'm, I'm like, how do you not know that this game is a jigsaw puzzle game? Did you not look at like the screenshots or the video? I'm on like, the- it yeah. shows you. And it's also called Pieces of My Heart. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck do you yeah. think? Oh, do people literally that. just see like anime eyes and go like, buy, I don't care. I'm going to buy it right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. God. Um, so we literally made a meme, which was like, you know, these, the, the two guys in space when the other guy pulls a gun on him and he's like, it's always, <laughs> always has, has been. been. Yeah. Yeah. So we got, we got <laughs> I'll, I'll try and find it for you later. It's, it's great. Like it took, it literally took me two days to make this meme and I'm so impressed with it that, but no one cared that I released it by the way. <laughs> uh, and it's like literally like Frida's like like the dude in front of him is like, wait, it's all jigsaw puzzles? And then Frida's like, always has been, bitch. Boom. I'm <laughs> pretty sure I'm pretty sure I saw that, yeah. Oh, that's uh, beautiful. That's beautiful. And and uh we put it up on Steam as well. But then but then everyone was like, you know, that music is like hella copyrighted. I'm like, oh fuck. So like I took it down, but uh still it was just perfect. It was, you know, like there's so many like dumb memes that go into that game that yeah. um like <sighs> that's part of the reason why I wanted to do adult stuff so I could do dumb memes if I'm being completely But that's like that that's oh, another thing that makes it relatable at least to guys like us. They get I mean it, it's relatable to the audience of people that are going to buy that game because they're probably already memers if they're looking at hentai games on Steam. So it's like, yeah. I can, I can literally tell you right now the entire reason I made Sapphire Safari, which is the Pokemon Snap game, is to literally make the "Are you a boy or a girl?" meme a joke. Like, like, <laughs> oh my god! The only reason I made that game. So. That's fantastic. That's funny. Yeah, two and a half <laughs> years of of hardcore like tech development and like countless hundreds of hours spent building like furry models. Just to make a fucking dumb for like a nine gag meme, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dedication, uh, dedication. We can appreciate on this podcast. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Always do it for the memes. <laughs> but I can guarantee you that game will probably make us the most money as well. I mean, from what you're telling us about it, because like I didn't realize it was going to be open world until you told us here. So that's that's I, insane. I I've recently found out in the last year. That I had a fetish for Monster Girls. I didn't know that was a thing until I watched Monster Moose and Mason. So I'm excited. Because <laughs> I'm like, fuck yeah. We've like, ruined this poor cool. boy. You really did, you fuck. Like, I never played any of these games until I got PC. Then I was like, oh. Oh, that, yeah. We, we also bought him a PC for his birthday last year. And so, uh, yeah, it's it's literally our fault he's like this now. Well, and then the next one's a stream deck, so you can do it on the toilet, right? Like. I, I got my money down on the Steam Deck. I'm just waiting, uh, but I guess they got I, they just got pushed back to like February. So instead of getting mine like a year from now, I'm gonna get it like quarter one, 2023 or whatever. Who knows? Heck, that's what I like to hear. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. When the 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 day I get to play pieces of my heart on the toilet, you will be the first to know. That's for damn sure. Just send a picture of the thing. Like, just yeah. picture of my frosted turd with Olivia's face on the screen. 
Look, bro, if you can, if that works natively in that system with the touch screen, I'll be like, okay. I, I'll put I don't it on know. Android. I, I have no I, idea. Gonna, I, can, I can guarantee it's not going to fucking work. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> I know they're trying to get as many games working on that thing as possible. I'm skeptical, but I'm mm. still skeptical enough to put $5 down to eventually pay, like, what, 750 bucks for that thing? Yeah. Yeah, that, they'll have time travel before that thing comes out, though. So hey, ah! then if hey, if it sucks, I can go you back can... in time and shoot myself instead of paying for it. It's fine. Uh, y- I don't know. You want to wrap this one up because you you've been you've been fantastic, and I know it's really late where you are. Yeah. So I'm um, bad for keeping for keeping you up. No, because uh, Zach, you know what happened? I told him it was going to be eleven thirty his time. I did the time. I realized what I did. I did the time. Um, uh, the time measurement wrong. I thought it was six hours between Utah and him. It's actually eight. Six hours between yeah. me and him. So, yeah. yeah. Jackass. Yeah, well, oh, you well, know, this is why you don't get the guy who's bad at math to set these things up, but here I am. Uh, I'm just, like, all I'm doing is waiting for, waiting for the new Battlefield to drop at this point. So oh, God. Man. Well, thank you for letting us interview you and talk to me. It's awesome. It's really fun. Yeah, uh, this has been for, super in-depth. For you, but we, I had fun. Uh, it's nice to meet like the developers that like make games that I've actually like really enjoy. Like these are fun. Mm-hmm. They're fun, and I'm excited for your future projects. Yeah, uh, for real. It's gonna be great. Yeah, so it's worth pointing out though. I'm not. I don't do any of the tech work though. So okay. Like I, I just signed. I just signed the paychecks, basically. No, no. <laughs> it's it's uh, Shigeru Miyamoto. He ha- he he folds those games a thousand times in the fires of Mount Fuji himself, and no one helps. Yeah, That's how it works. Yeah. So you're the figurehead. So you get all the credit. It's, a, it's actually kind of funny, too, because I'm considered the normie. Uh, <laughs> like, I know, I'm not joking, because I've spent so long, like, none of, none, of, none of my own games do anything for me. So, like, I hire people, I hire consultants to tell me whether or not it's good. <laughs> well, I mean, like, that just, it, when you create something, like, I can't imagine a lot of, like, musicians are like super jazzed to hear their own music because they've heard it so many times. It's just kind of like numb to them. It's, right. the sa- it's the same thing when I'm drawing a picture and I like look at it. And I'm like, is this even good or am I crazy? Like what the, yeah. You, you say that, but like the people that are making like the furry girls for me, they're just like, yeah, this shit's working for me. And I'm like, okay. I mean, well, that's cool, man. But like, fur- furries are a different paper. breed. Fur- furries are a completely <laughs> different breed. They're they're a little high on their own supply, both literally and figuratively. I think. But I I remember I remember the conversation I had with the modeler, and he was one day when he was like, "Okay, so I got this thing. It's called Cumflation." I'm like, "What the <laughs> hell is that? What the, what the hell is that?" And he's like, "Look, check this out." And he showed me a video that he how made much of time the you got? Yeah, he showed me a video that he made with the models, and I'm like, "Dude, that's fucking disgusting." And he's like, "Nah, it's good. This is what people want." I'm like. Okay, I'll trust you on this. <laughs> There's going to be a little bit of that stuff in that game no matter what, because you can tell just but on a separate note, some of that fetish shit that gets kind of worked in there, you can tell Erkarut, the guy who did the art for Pieces of My Heart, you can tell he's a foot guy. 110%. He's not. What? He's no not. way! No, he's not. He's God. Not. He's really not. I just remember, because... We had this discussion where, like, we don't have any feet stuff in pieces. And he's like, <sighs> <laughs> He's like, God. Because he does that art a lot. I just figured he was, but. I was just looking, of... looking at the gamer chick one, like, earlier. And, like, the way she's sitting, like, you would think he had that fetish because her feet are, like, out, like, prominently. Nah, he was. So he, he's a Patreon artist. So. Yeah. It's kind of one of those weird things where, like, he makes the money. Uh, doing what people want, right? Right. So pe- people people want the feet. So he just got good at doing the feet. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, I mean, if it works for you, I just to. he's got like a whole channel dedicated to feet on his server. I just assumed, but here we are. Yeah, right. Well, damn. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's one of those things, you know. Like sometimes, sometimes people just do it because that's where their life has led them. <laughs> it's like finding out the great pumpkin isn't real. <laughs> Uh, yeah. that's hilarious yeah. uh, seriously thank you Dave so much for your time this has been extremely illuminating and an awesome conversation everyone out there listening to this please for the love of God go get pieces of my heart it's fantastic me and Zach both give it our stamp of approval 
We're yep. going to review it eventually, if not sometime later this year. We'll review it soon. Don't worry. Um, yeah, honestly, if it, if yeah, if Dave's like review it, like it's good. Like the voice acting is fantastic. The storyline's fantastic. The porn is fantastic. The cum physics exquisite. Play it. Well, thank thank you fun. for mentioning the cum physics. Thank you. <laughs> Go out there, get a copy of Pieces of My Heart, cover a girl in some brown goo. And uh, like and like they were saying too, there is tons of different fetishes in there. There's something for everyone. Yeah. Kinda. Um yep. there's we even got NPR in there. Yeah, for real. <laughs> uh yeah. and all, and yeah, also uh check out a looter on early access because it's out now as of as of like late october right like it really wasn't that long ago so no go check it out it's in early access uh give your feedback to kinky friday so they can help make the game even better and uh yep Yep. yeah did you want to plug anything else like your twitter or the the discord channel or whatever Uh, yeah i mean go join the discord it's it's good stuff you know um we have a uh, I think a couple thousand in there now, like 2,000, 3,000. I can't remember how big we are now. We're, we're getting pretty big. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, we're always building stuff. Like right now we're building seven games, something like wow. that. So like, busy. Yeah, we're always building stuff. So you got to be busy, man. Yeah. You're not busy. What are you doing? You know? like, yeah. Well, it's, yeah, that's that's 100%. That's a lot on your plate, but it'll mm-hmm. work out. It'll be great. It's yeah. The the real trap is watching Netflix, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. You're not being productive. You're not being productive. You're you're wasting your time. Yeah. Ah, well, thanks for chastising me, and I guess I'll. I guess I'll you can't really watch Squid I'll Game while you code because it's all in Korean. But whatever. <laughs> oh no, they have the dubbing. Yeah. Are you really gonna watch Squid Game dubbed though? Come on. My wife's Polish. Of course, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we will catch you guys next time on the Nude Clan podcast and uh, walk with your cock held high. Live always in the nude. Mm-hmm. Stay moist. See you, fucker. <laughs> That's amazing. Fuck off. That's the final sign off, by the way. I'm not telling you to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs>